Well, g'day and welcome to this episode of Noob Eden. I am really excited about this episode because we are going to do a crash course into one of the aspects of EVE that I think is one of the most exciting and most enjoyable, and that is when you get into a fleet and you fleet up with other pilots and you engage in whatever the activity is, whether it be a mining fleet, PvP fleet, PvE. Uh, there is a whole heap of game mechanics that open up when you're in a fleet, but not only that, not just game mechanics, but personal interactions and, and ways of being in a fleet. So we are going to give you guys uh, the crash course in how to be useful and uh, effective in a fleet. Let's get into it. Now, I guess the first question to be answered is, well, how do I find a fleet to get into? There are a couple of answers to that question or a couple of options. One is you could go to your agency and from the home screen, there is a fleet up button or banner. And when you go into that, it will list for you fleets that are available. And you can see that I can toggle that or filter it by new player friendly fleets. These are players who currently have fleets up there are advertised their fleet and are asking you to, to join. There is some information about the activity. For example, uh, this one here is resource harvesting. Here's the fleet leader, the name of the fleet, how long it's been active, how many members are in it, how far away it is. And you'll also see some information in the description. In this case, there's a link to a chat channel that you could go in and maybe ask some questions about the fleet beforehand. And if you decide that is the fleet that you want to join, you can request to join and you'll be invited to join the fleet. That is one way. Let's close that. All right, another option would simply be to go to your Neocom. Uh, in social, you'll find this fleet icon. I'm gonna click and drag that so it's a shortcut in my Neocom. I can open that and I see the fleet finder. This is basically the same information that was on the agency window uh, that we just saw. Now, this is one way that you could get into a fleet. I'm probably not going to recommend this straight up, although you're more than welcome to go and try out. These are people who've set up fleets and I just, I don't know them. That You may have a great experience you may not so you're welcome to try that out but uh, another way that you can probably have a little bit more of a a, um, a reliable experience i guess as a new player would be to use uh, an external third party to find some public fleets that have been set up specifically for public roams and i'm going to put a link in the description to the website that we're about to have a look at right so what we're looking at here is an npsi calendar now npsi stands for not purple shoot it refers to the fact that when you're in a fleet your fleet members by default on your overview show up as purple so don't shoot them but if they're not purple we're going to shoot everything else these are a great way to get involved in public fleets uh to learn about fleet mechanics and whatever the type of fleet is whether it's pvp or pve or something like that uh, but more importantly, not only do we have a calendar down here of when some of these NPSI fleets are on, but across the top, we have links to some of the groups that are running these NPSI fleets. Not all of them, but there's uh, quite a good list here to get you started. Now, if you have a look at, if I want to click on, let's say, Spectre Fleet, one of the larger ones, I'll get some additional info about their fleet activity. Now, importantly, I want to point out down here, Fleet Comms and Discord. Now, we're going to talk about comms in a moment, but there are three main pieces of software that most fleets will use for voice comms. Discord, which uh, Spectre Fleet are using here. Uh, I can go across to, uh, let's see, Organic, who are using Mumble for their fleets, and Perpetrator using TeamSpeak. So I'm going to make the suggestion that if you want to be involved in some of these fleets before you get involved, make sure you have a look at what comms they use, or just make sure you've got all three available and set up in your computer, ready to go. Mumble, TeamSpeak, and Discord. Now, I'm not going to spend more time on that, but if we need to do a video on that, we will. You can go and Google those things. Uh, they're free to use, so I would have all three available so that whatever fleet you end up in, you've got voice comms that are appropriate. Yeah, so that's how you can get yourself into a fleet. Hey, and just quickly, while we're on the subject of voice comms, whatever software you end up using, make sure you have your input set to push to talk, not voice activity. You want to set up a hotkey that you press when you want to talk. That way you don't have any accidental yells, screams, or someone running the vacuum in the background. Whatever it is, make sure you're set to push to talk always. All right, you've made your way to the system you need to be for your fleet. Now, if it's an advertised fleet, you could use that fleet finder we looked at earlier, or you may need to ask in local for an invite. Now, don't ever do this over comms, just asking by saying your name because fleet FCs are busy people. By far the easiest way is to simply drag your name down into local, hit enter, and that way you can say, ah, oh, in local, can that guy get a fleet invite, please? And the FC will send you an invite. And there you go, our FC has sent us an invite. Uh, we're gonna hit yes, and voila, 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have joined our first fleet. Woohoo! So now that we're in our fleet, here are some things that will pop up, some windows that become available to us. The first important one is we have a new chat window. This is our fleet chat window. It's a, it's a chat channel specifically for the fleet. That is really important that you keep an eye on that for information. Most often that's where it will go. You also have this fleet uh, window here that has some information, a few tabs. Given that this is a crash course, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but you've got the fleet hierarchy, which shows your fleet uh, FC. In fact, if you hover over some of these icons, it will tell you some information about these people. It shows you the squad that you're in. Okay, so you've got a hierarchy down here, some broadcasts we'll talk about in a moment. You've also got this history tab. We're going to talk about that. The others we're going to leave for the moment. Given that this is a crash course, these are the most important ones. Now, just because you have voice comms does not mean that you have to use them. Uh, don't be the guy, that guy that gets into fleet straight away without any sort of sense of situational awareness of what's going on. Just starts asking, where are we at? What are we flying? Right, use your fleet chat for things like, you know, uh, what, uh, what ships are we in, for example. Right, if you use the fleet chat as much as possible, that means many people have got access to be able to answer you, take the pressure off the FC, and it means you're not going to interrupt uh, maybe some other important conversations that are going on. Now, here's a typical response you may get to that question. Trade Phonic, or this particular person, for ships. Now, many fleets will have ships available to give to fleet members. So you'll have to get them from a particular person who is dispersing them. The easiest way, if they're linked in a fleet like this, is you can right-click on it and you can open up a trade window, in which case they will be able to give you a ship. Now, a couple of little things to watch out for here. There may be different types of ships being handed out. So one way that's often used in, in larger fleets, especially to allocate uh, or to, for you to, I guess, notify what kind of ship you're after, whether it be a, a DPS or a Logi or a particular thing, uh, the FC on comms may say uh, trade one ISK for the DPS, two ISK for Logi. So you could offer ISK, you could put one ISK in there. That way the person doing the trades, now remember they may have 20, 30 of these windows open. So you're trying to make life easy for them. They know, oh, New Beden's offering one ISK, they must be after a DPS ship. In which case you'll be given a ship, you accept the trade and you are good to go. All right, happy days. We've got our ship. We're in a fleet from here on in. It's basically just following the FC's instructions and directions. And if you are a bit nervous about that or, uh, you know, unsure, please make sure you speak up and let the FC know that you're new. That way they can be a little bit more descriptive and help you along the journey. So one of the first instructions you might get will be to undock. So let's undock and we'll join our fleet on the undock. All right, the FC may ask you to hold on the undock, so control space will stop your ship. That'll allow everyone to stay together as a group. Now, in terms of movement, uh, it will depend on what's happening and what the FC style is. Uh, there is a thing called fleet warp, where the FC can f warp the entire fleet to certain locations, or they may just say to you, for example, the FC may say, fleet align acti, align the acti gate. So you're just going to align that ready for the next instruction. Now, in this case, I'm going to get the FC to fleet warp us off to a particular location. And you'll know that happens because you're, all of a sudden, you're warp will happen and it'll see up here following pyro ninja in warp so in this case we've been fleet warped i didn't initiate that it was initiated by the fc let's spend a few minutes just talking about um, basic travel and and commands and things to listen out for when you're traveling around as a fleet to get to your objective so the fc may often ask you one of three things usually align warp or jump and it's very important that you listen out for what the command is. And if you miss it, just speak up, say, FC, could you please repeat? So it may be uh, that the FC says align acti. So we're going to look for the acti gate. We're going to align to that. It means we're not warping to it yet. We're just getting aligned, ready to go. Now, whether it's a fleet warp or whether we, uh, we go under our own steam, but we're aligned to the acti gate, facing it, ready for the next step. FC may say uh, warp acti, warp acti. Or you may say warp acti at 50. So if he's listening for a, you're listening for a direction as well. If you don't get a direction, just assume that means warp to at zero. So if FC calls warp acti, fleet warp acti, you're going to warp to the acti gate and you're going to hold, you're going to wait. You don't go through until you get the command that is jump. Okay, so we use align, warp and jump. Uh, if they may say, look, jump on contact, jump on contact, which means as soon as you land, you're going to jump through. So you can set the jump to go through. 
Alright, hold cloak, hold cloak. Okay, so you may get the command to hold cloak, which means don't do anything. We want to stay cloaked for our session timer, which gives us uh, one minute of cloaked uh, here while the FC maybe just makes some uh, some decisions about what's happening next. So if you get the call to hold cloak, don't do anything. Don't align or do anything that would unbreak your cloak. Okay, FC may say, all right, uh, we're going to align Fleet, align Fleet. So we're going to align to Fleet. You'll see that that breaks our cloak. Hopefully the fleet is all facing in one direction. Uh, warp Fleet, warp Fleet. So we're going to warp to. Another call you might get uh, is gate is red. Gate is red, which means stop. Don't go through. Okay, so Mace, FC, every FC has got their own little sort of flavor of the way they like to communicate. But these are just some of the more common ones. Gate is red, means do not go through. Gate is green, means uh, you can jump through as soon as you land. So in this case, maybe look, gate is red, gate is red. Hold at the gate, fleet hold at the gate, gate is red which means do not go through. So as soon as we land, we're going to hold and uh, we could approach it or we could maybe orbit it at 500 if you'd like. So I'm just gonna have my radio menu here. I might just orbit this at a thousand and we'll wait the next instruction. Gate is red, gate is red. All right, and then finally we get the call. All right, gate is green, gate is green, jump flare, gate is green. So you can jump through. remember you can undo a jump command mid warp so if the fc says uh, warp acti warp acti and you accidentally hit jump acti so we're now on our way to the acti gate and you realize oh crap or the fc changes his mind it says no hold hold on hold on contact hold on contact control space if you do control space while you're in mid warp that will undo the jump command and when we get to the gate it will not go through and carry out the jump so if you need to undo that mid uh, mid warp control space is your friend okay now remember this is a crash course so we're going to go through a few mechanics now nice and quickly it's not meant to be an in-depth but just enough to get you going so very importantly what you need to have open as well as your fleet chat window is your actual fleet this particular fleet window here okay, there's a couple of really important things on here so have this set somewhere where you can see it and let's talk about a few things on here. First of all, the fleet hierarchy, you can see what squad you're in. But more importantly is this tab here, the history tab. Now, FCs are able to broadcast certain uh, bits of information within a fleet. It might be a target, it might be somewhere uh, that you need to align to. For example, let's get, uh, let's get our FC to broadcast a line to the Acti Stargate. Okay, so you can see in this history, it's like a it's like a running list of instructions, I guess, or directions. Uh, so in this case, the instruction is aligned to Acti Stargate. Now, the beautiful thing is from here, we can actually align to it from the history window. I don't have to come down here from this history window. I can right click align to uh, on that. Now you can see in doing that, I've kind of wandered off from the fleet there. So an important thing is the concept of an anchor so you want to anchor yourself to a particular person in fleet now often in comms or in fleet chat that will be uh, designated who the anchor is it might be a dps anchor there might be a logi anchor for the logistics ships but you want to know who that person is because you want to basically stick to them you want to maybe orbit them at 500 or keep them at range at 500 uh, for example just so you know you're not going to float off like this so it can get a bit hairy trying to find the anchor in a list of people here. So if I needed to anchor to Pyro Ninja, in this list it's easy, but if this was 200 people, this could get a little bit daunting. So I could uh, simply, from here, I could use my radial menu. Okay, so if I needed to get close to Pyro, I could use my radial menu and I could say, you know, uh, orbit at 1000, for example. But in a long list, how do we make it a bit easier? Well, this is where we set up, and it's important to do this early on, a watch list, which is a list of up to 15 special people that you can separate out from this fleet hierarchy. So I'm going to right click Pyro Ninja and I'm gonna add him to a watch list, which you'll see now is a separate little window that I can put up to 15 people in there. And not only do I see their name, but I also see their uh, shield, armor, and hull status. Important, particularly in terms of logistics, to see who is taking damage. But the beautiful thing is here, I've got a nice list now of the important people. And if I needed to, I can right click and I could orbit my pyro. So especially where, whoever your anchor is, make sure they're in your watch list so that if you do get a bit lost, confused, and float off, you can nice and quickly get back to orbiting your anchor. 
Now, in a small fleet like this, it may actually make sense to put your entire fleet, or if you're in a small gang, put them all in the watch list. Quick and easy way is I can actually click, shift click, and drag those two pilots in there. Uh, not me. What am I going to do? Phonic and 100 frigates and drag them in. Okay. So I can drag people into my watch list uh, to keep an eye on them. Not only that, but I can actually highlight, like if I knew Pyro is my FC and that was my anchor, I could highlight him a particular color to indicate that I know that's my anchor. If I ever get lost or float off, I can go there. These guys might be my uh, my Logi, for example. So I could set them a different color. Whatever, whatever sort of little strategy works for you. Okay, for the purposes of the video, we've kicked Phonic from Fleet. He's now the enemy. He's what we're going to shoot. Now, how do we know who to shoot? Well, there are two ways to go about this. First of all, there may be just verbal calls by the FC. You might say, uh, primary is Phonic in the worm. Phonic is the primary, in which case you would go through and you would control click Phonic and start shooting him. Now, if this list was long with you know hundreds of pilots, uh, one way to sort that would be you could sort by names. You could quickly scroll down to the P's, find him and shoot him. However, there is an easier way, and that is via broadcasts. Now, before we take a broadcast, in your overview settings, open overview settings, go to the miscellaneous tab. You want to make sure this is checked. Move entries with broadcasts to the top. So let's have a look. So many FCs, instead of just calling it verbally or as well as calling it verbally, they will broadcast it. So if Phonic was our target, our FC may broadcast that and it will show up here in this history list. Now, the beauty of that is, if you have a look down here, Phonic has now popped to the top, okay, with a little broadcast symbol next to him, a little target symbol, because of that setting we just checkboxed. So I could control click. I don't need to go searching, he's at the top of my list. If for some reason he's not, or I've, you'll see now that that uh, resets after a time, I can, from this history tab, actually control click and lock him up right from there, which is by far probably the quickest and easiest way to do it from the history window hold down control click on the target and i'll lock him up and we can start shooting him all good all right one thing i forgot to mention about this watch list is you can also click and drag your order so if you want a particular person at the top and if you have a look in this case there's also this little symbol here if i hover over it it shows me what the last broadcast was so if i forget what the last one was or if this gets mixed up and jumbled gets a whole heap of different things on it you know we might get uh we might get a whole heap of things like broadcast this uh, broadcast this, uh, broadcast this, All right? And things can start to get a little bit crazy in here. So how can we tidy this up? Well, there's a couple of things we can do. We can simply clear the history if we need to. The most recent broadcast will always go at the top, but if it gets a bit jumbled, we can just simply clear it and we'll start afresh. All right, the next little tip, and in no particular order, is uh, adding a bit of color to our history window here because it can get a little bit um, full of things and you may lose particular things that are important to you now as a DPS for example you might want to make sure that this target broadcast stands out from the others so there are some settings that we can tweak if we go up here into broadcast settings and in particular uh, this one here broadcast so when a target is broadcast we might want that to stand out so I might change that to a red right so I know and you can see now in my history list any of these um, target broadcasts will stand out from the others as red, okay? And I may not want to see particular things. So I might not, you know, if I'm following a DPS, I might not want to see when people are requesting they need shield or they need armor. We'll talk about that in a moment. So I could turn them off. Let's say I wanted to turn off the um, warp to announcements, not that you would, but if we did, if I unclick that, you'll see it's now disappeared from my history list so you can really go through and tweak that but particularly important is maybe to set a color for those uh, broadcasts that are going to be critical to you now speaking of broadcasts is there ever a time where you need to broadcast rather than receive broadcasts well yes there is if you're in a fleet that has logistic support so healing ships uh, you may need to call out to let them know hey I need some armor or I need some shield logi uh, so obviously, uh, let's pretend in this case we're flying an armor ship. Across the bottom here are some buttons for you to press where you can broadcast. So if I needed armor, I could press that button and you'll see in the history list that everyone else will see, hey, New Eden needs armor. And the Logi ships might have that set red so that they can see when someone asks for armor repairs. So when do you broadcast for repairs? And well, first of all, you see that I came down and clicked on it. That's really... 
the least efficient way of doing it. Okay, well, I'm going to go into our shortcuts. So I'm going to go escape, going to shortcuts, and I'm going to do a quick search for armor. Broadcast need armor. So I would suggest you hit a hotkey for this. Now, if you're in a shield ship, obviously you would set the hotkey for shield. But in this case, I'm going to set this to, let's say, uh, X. And return to game. So now, rather than having to go down here and, and find this very small icon, let's clear that. If I need armor, all I need to do is just tap the X key and I've sent out a broadcast. So, hey, help me. I need some armor repairs. Right, so when is the appropriate time for you to broadcast that you need repairs, you need logi? Well, it's not after you start taking damage. Don't wait until the damage starts to be applied. Often that's too late, particularly in large fleets. The DPS will come on you so quick. You want to do that when you are yellow boxed. So when a, a number of the fleet actually have you locked up, that's the point where you hit your shortcut to say, hey, uh, I need some armor. And that will give the logi ships time to pre lock you up ready to apply the uh, reps so you'll see down here on my overview the little yellow flashing box around phonic that means he's got me locked up okay if you see if you know if there were 10 enemy on grid and and half of them yellow box you that's the time to broadcast for your repairs whether it's armor or shield in the hustle and bustle and the busyness of a fleet or a fight you may find yourself getting separated or lost from the fleet uh, and you've warped to the wrong uh, location within a system so nice and easy when you've got your watch list set up with your anchor you can simply right click and walk to member okay. or you can use your radial menu so if you end up uh, look there's no one else on grid here i'm here on my own uh, what where the heck are they actually walk back to your anchor and you'll see that that will take you back to where you are meant to be and you should land on grid with your fleet hopefully let's see Oh, hi guys, that feels so much better. I was like a little lost sheep over there back where you're meant to be. So a few little tips, I guess, about using voice comms while you're in a fleet. Usually there's two different um, statuses or two different modes, I guess, you can be in. One can be what they call casual comms. So FC might say, hey, casual comms. So yeah, chew the fat, talk as much as you want. It's one of the, the great things about being in a fleet is that social aspect of it. But there's another um, mode, I guess, called battle comms. And often the FC might say, all right, battle comms, battle comms, which means stop crapping on only speak the important information okay so that's time that's the time where everyone needs to focus listen for what is critical some of the things that are critical is if you've got any intel if you you know spot a certain ship or if you've got something that you think might be relevant to the fleet and what's going on share that intel uh if you were to die for example in a um in, in a fleet and you've got to or you've got to warp off for some reason uh it's it's often good etiquette just to say look minus one atron now you know if you're in a big fleet with lots of big ships don't let them know that they're minus one frigate but you know if it was a small gang or if you're in a large dps ship that's important information for the fc to know that he's got one less dps ship on the grid and when you maybe walk back on the grid let him know hey back on grid now you would not say i'm back on grid right so really important if you're in a fleet you're trying to get into that habit of speaking as yourself in the third party so you might say uh, minus one atron warp off come back all right uh new beaten back on grid or new beaten going for repairs or thanks fc new beaten got a drop fleet and by the way always thank the fc never ever blame the fc even if you lose your ship and it's a whelping and things go horribly wrong uh fc's are the lifeblood of content in eve so uh, if you've got a problem with the fc either speak to them privately after the fleet and talk it through or just don't go on their fleets anymore but in fleet comms you always want to be supportive uh, of the fc even if they're making mistakes or let them know privately it's, it's never cool to publicly uh, slag the fc so always talk in the third party if you can so that the fc knows who it is that's giving that information or who that information is relevant to there's nothing worse than someone jumps or comes and goes oh crap i'm tackled and everyone's like okay first of all who are you? Where are you? So, you know, if you've got something like that, you say, uh, New Beden, I am currently tackled on the Amane Gate uh, by a worm. Well, honestly, guys, that's probably enough for now. I did not want this to be a big, long um, video. There are a lot of nuances about being in fleets and fighting in fleets. We can cover them in future episodes, but I wanted to give you enough to get going because it can be a little bit daunting to think oh i'd love to be in a fleet or join a fleet but i don't know what to do well hopefully we've given you enough to get you going on that 
set yourself up with voice comms, follow instructions, speak up if you're not sure about something. One last little thing at the end of the fleet when we go back, let's quickly talk about maybe giving back the ship that you borrowed. Well, congratulations, you've survived your first fleet. Everyone's back at home station now. And uh, what happens now with the ship? Well, if it's yours, obviously you go home. Uh, if it was given to you, there's a presumption you would give it back unless they say, hey, keep the ships. But there are a couple of other options and quickly go through some etiquette around that. You may offer to buy the ship. You go say, guys, do you mind if I buy this? I really love this little ship. Uh, and if they agree, they say, oh yeah, three million. Well, uh, we might go to Phonic because I'm looking at the fleet here. It says ships go back to Phonic. So I could give money. I could pay the, the agreed price, put a little reason, you know, thanks for the fleet ship, whatever, whatever. Okay, so I could buy the ship. Now it's mine. We're all good. Uh, if I'm giving it back, there are a couple of ways to do this. Um, well, a couple of things to do first of all always good etiquette to just quickly repair it like if it's damaged just go uh, do a quick repair in this case there was no damage um, if you're giving something back and it's you've used up maybe all the ammo or you left the, the drones got killed and it's it's short now it's missing something always a really good habit to right click change the name and just say uh, drones missing Right, so we give that back. Then they know because you know the FC may get you know a hundred of these ships back and trying to go through and figure out which ones have got issues or which ones are good to use next time. So we could do that. So I've changed the name. It says drones missing, and that just helps them with a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, from there, we want to get out of the ship before we give it back. So we leave the ship, and if they're going back to Phonic, I could right click and open up a trade. And from my hangar, I could drop that in there and uh, hit accept and just wait for Phonic to accept that. Remember, they may be going through quite a lot of them. Or there's a, just a little shortcut while we're at it. Uh, cancel that. Uh, I could simply click and drag it over the name of the person that I want to trade it to, in this case, in the fleet window. And there you go. And I can hit accept and give it back and say thank you for the fleet. Tell them hopefully what a wonderful time we've had and that we can't wait to do more. And yeah, basically guys, that's kind of it. Hopefully you learned some stuff there. Like I said, that was the crash course. We didn't go through, like I said, some of the nuances, but uh, hopefully there's enough for you to think, you know what, this is not too intimidating or scary. I feel like I've got enough now that I could get in a fleet and um, roughly know what I'm doing without being a pain and a confusing mess. So what more to say other than good job, well done.